everyone as you guys join. It's so good to see some faces, lots of names, which is awesome. Um, okay, now just so that you guys know, um, if you want to see the speaker view, just look to the upper right hand side of your screen and it will say view. And then you can change it to speaker view if you'd like. Um, so that's what I always do, which is great. Um, so I'm Stephanie Springers and I'm the founder of Glam Hive. Thank you so much for being here. And I am here with um, two amazing stylists who also happen to be part of Glam Hive. Franzi and Shelly. Franzi's in Los Angeles. Shelly's in Chicago. And um, these two girls are just two of my absolute favorites. Um, they've worked with so many amazing clients, do such a great job as stylists, whether it's in real life or virtually. Um, and I'm so glad just to see their faces. Um, so welcome, everyone. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. It's always so nice to be at the Glam Hive Summits. <laughs> I love it. So this one is like Style 101. Um, you guys answer the most common questions. And so for this particular session, you guys, we can take questions during the whole thing. We can have it be dynamic because whether you're a stylist and you want to ask a question to, um, you know, of two of these, I would say most elite top stylists, or if you're just a style lover and you have questions, please, please do. I'm going to kind of go off script right from the beginning. Okay. Right from the beginning. I would love for you guys to tell us your top three tips, your top three style tips, like the thing that you know to be true as a stylist that you would tell anyone. And we're going to start with Franzi. Okay. So I feel like what I really talk about a lot is how two things, like fashion is like pieces, right? But how to put it together is, is style. And then the second one is how do you actually tuck in a shirt? How do you roll up a sleeve? How do you, what do you do with your jeans? So those basics, I think are really like how to bring across that you thought about your outfit, right? Any, anybody can put on a t-shirt and, and a pair of jeans, right? But if you French tuck, that's what I call it. I think it's an official term, like where you like tuck the shirt t-shirt in a little bit and let the rest, you know, kind of like flow over your waist. That's always a good tip. Your jeans, maybe you can roll it one time to for it to be a little bit of more of an ankle those kind of, uh, you know, things. And then, oh, this one is also a good one. A jacket and a, and a long sleeve. I always say, have your long sleeve come out of your jacket a little bit. So you see that fabric and instantly you have like so much more style and fashion going on just with these like three little hints of, of this little touch. So I have a question. What is yeah. the French tuck? How do you, do, are you wearing a blouse? Can you show us okay. the French tuck? Okay, here we go. Here's a live demonstration. Thank God I put on pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so like I, I have it, I have it all around, but then my blouse is really long because it's like some vintage silk blouse. So I would pull it all out and just have this front like tucked in and then the rest would just kind of like drape like this. And that. That's what I would, you know, it, it works really well with trousers and jeans. And I mean, it's, it's like, it makes day. And once you start doing it, you see everybody else who does it. And they're like, oh, this is so much more fashion. So every time I work with private clients and we go over that little trick, it's like, um, I don't know. It just makes, makes a whole difference. And do you do it in the middle or do you do it on the side? So I like it when it aligns with the buttons. Got it. Sometimes if it, the eye kind of just looks funny if it's like to the side. So I always, if it's a button shirt, I always want to make sure that the buttons do align. And um, if it's like a t-shirt, you can probably do it a little bit to the side, but I think just by your pant button to kind of tuck it in there is, I mean, it's, it's a really, it's, it's very like stable knowledge. <laughs> with your blazer and a blouse, are you rolling the blazer sleeve up? So I actually, depends on the blazer. So, um, 
Sometimes we have like a blazer that has a different lining. So then it's kind of, it's cute to roll up the sleeve. Yeah. But oftentimes what I like to do is just pull up the sleeve of the blazer, maybe like, what is this? Two, two, three inches to maybe like yeah. a three quarter and then just have some like flowy fabric right there coming and, and, and even like just laying over your hand. And I actually tell people, my clients also to open the buttons of the blouse to just kind of like Let have it, it like a stream of, of fabric. This is what I love about you guys. I, I know that Nicole Alowitz, one of my friends is a stylist for Access Hollywood. Yeah. We were meeting in LA and I had my blazer on. She's like, Stephanie, take your blazer off and just put it over your shoulders. Yeah. You just to- God, it looks so much better. And these are the things, the little tiny things that the normal, regular the rest of us don't know. And so now I'm going to move on to you, Shelly, because I know you've got a ton of tips, but they're your top three. Yeah. You know where I'm going to stick with, you know, what my background is and my background is lingerie. So every client I work with, my main focus is starting with the bra, the foundation and building their look from there. It's so crucial. It can make or break the whole look. It is where I begin working with everyone. So the bra has to be on point. Next is probably the most important part is working with proportions and balancing the body. So every, every client, it's literally about creating that illusion that we have the hourglass. That's the ultimate, most flattering feminine silhouette. So literally based on their height, their breast size, their hips, their body, I'm able to use the bra the clothes as a tool to just balance them the right fabrics the right tucks all of those things are so crucial in creating that shape i can make someone look 10 pounds slimmer with the right fabrics proportions and silhouettes and that's where recently most women are just struggling Uh, most women think more fabric means they're going to look you know more hidden or you know, covered up, but ultimately the more fabric you add, sometimes it just makes you look like you're hiding or fuller in places that you don't want to accentuate. So it's working with proportions, working with um, typically right now with the high-waisted jeans, high-waisted everything. It's a flattering silhouette for all women, I feel like, no matter if you're 5'10 or 5'2. We've got to go high waist, create that visual line, the smallest part of the waist, and then just balance their body and have fun with it. So that's my main one. This is the thing that I've learned the most in working with stylists and getting to know Shelly in particular because she worked at a bra company for 15 years. And I would say that whether you are a stylist on this panel or you are a style enthusiast, every single woman on this panel listening right now would benefit from an hour with Shelly doing a proper bra fitting. Oh, yeah. I'm old enough to have remembered when Nordstrom used to be really known for it. Um, I think Oprah had a, a show about it, but yeah. Shelly is brilliant at doing these virtually. And I am literally uh, so impressed by her knowledge. And I think the thing that I've realized in talking to so many women in stylists, um, it's never about the, a designer piece of clothing. It's never about being the thinnest, the tallest, the anythingest. It's mm-hmm. about working with a stylist that can help you identify your shape and then accentuate your shape. And then as Shelly said, your proportions, mm-hmm. what Shelly does with bras is truly magic. It's like, you've had surgery. It's I'm not, wow. it's yeah. like you've had surgery. <laughs> it, it is. Literally. And so, and I think that, um, yeah, because Franzi was saying that she's more European. So like the bralettes, which, so Shelly, when you talk about a bra wardrobe, maybe you can run us quickly through. Oh yeah, of course. So yeah. I, of course, obvious is the t-shirt bra, the everyday t-shirt bra. Every woman needs two nudes and a black. Uh, here's like a basic, this is one of my go-tos, a little Le Mister plug, the brand I love. Oh, love cute. And so this is a back smoothing, everyday basic t-shirt bra. And getting the right fit. And it could truly make you look 10 pounds slimmer, 10 years younger with the right fit. So we've got that part. With summer coming, um, we've got our racer back. 
we, it's not a good look when our straps show. Nobody no, should be wearing straps. Never, ne never. That, I think I that just, is, yes, never, ever. It's not a good unless, look. unless it's like a, a little piece of lace. Yeah, it's very intentional. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Next is the strapless. So this is the one. I love this unlined Ooh, one. That one is beautiful. Yeah, right? So there are not a lot of unlined options on the market. This one not at all. Here, and I'm actually wearing it right now. So I didn't want a foam cup. I didn't want to be, you know, adding to my cup a little bit. So I just threw on this. We call it more of a bandeau strapless. And this is your brand? No, this is a brand I have worked with in the past. And I have a long history with them, but it, I wouldn't have been able to wear this dress as well as I feel like I'm wearing it without this strapless. Wow. Um, it, it, so it's truly having the right bras can make or break a look. And so many women, especially the full, you know, a lot of fuller busted women feel that they can't even wear a strapless, but let me see your makes, and then this is the basic for foam ones, your basic goes up to like an H cup. It's a great basic. And then of course we've got the lounge bra. Everybody's doing the, at, you know, at home lounge bra. Wireless What's the lounge bra. The yeah. Lounge what is the lounge? Like, that is a good I'll question. You right my butt. The lounge is like, basically you're at home. You are, um, you know, lounge, lounge. I love the fact that we actually are talking about women wearing bras for lounging because throughout 2020 it was like my entire mission for all of my virtual clients to not fall into the only lululemon athleisure yes. world yes so this is going to be really good about what shelly does with the right bras i think she's out looking for one is it actually improves your posture I think it does 100%. It 100% does. And, and that's what's so amazing about, I mean, honestly, Shelly is like a magician and um, it makes you love your body more. And I think that just what I know, what's coming into Glam Hive is, yeah, there are some people who've lost weight during COVID for sure. Yeah. Lots yeah. of people who've gained weight during COVID and there's yeah. no need to feel bad about it, you know? And just to, okay, Shelly's back. Did you find yeah, it? Yeah. So I, I lost it. But picture a wireless literally feels like you're wearing nothing but you have some support yeah I wouldn't go work out in it and that category is huge i mean commando yummy yeah. notor everybody's doing it and you just still like you could throw on a top and do a zoom call get away with it i wouldn't wear it out public but it's really comfy loungy yeah easy and then of course the athletic sport category is probably my fifth mm -hmm. sport everybody needs a good sports bra yeah and so you really recommend having like a um it's not so much having like you know beautiful lingerie which you also advocate for but it's actually having a wardrobe functional function and it's not about the size or the brand it's literally about having to me it doesn't matter it's how i look in my clothes rather than how the bra looks when my clothes are off. It truly is building your entire look. And it's the closest thing. I mean, and literally, as you said, it shifts your energy, your posture. So many women are having big indentions in their shoulders. I see it all the time and it's it not, it shouldn't happen. That's an ill-fitting bra. So it's, and then you cannot feel good in your body when there's pressure on your shoulders, you're punched over. So by having a proper fitting bra, it literally opens up your, you know, heart chakra and opens up your energy and you feel better. You look better. Mm -hmm. I love that. I really love it. Right. Yeah. One of the early questions that we just got was about mixing patterns. And so I don't, Franzi, maybe you want to take that one. I know that, you know, you, we often say things on Instagram or on, in editorials and the patterns are mixed so beautifully, but, um, you know, it'd be great to hear your advice on how to mix patterns. Yeah, patterns are, an, are interesting. So for any uh, beginner, I say become more comfortable with your solids first and then dive into like a solid and a pattern. For example, we have like um, gingham right now. So it's like, okay, how, how do you wear that? Like, can you wear like mini skirts are a thing right now, you know, mini and meaty skirts. Um, 
I like it. It's like, it's a little bit of a throwback to like the nineties. Definitely things are coming back. So the, the mini and midi skirts with the slip. And if it's like a floral print or a gingham, maybe combine it with um, a solid shirt, you know, whether it's like something more on the simple side, like a, a white V-neck or crew neck t-shirt, or if you feel adventurous, two different kinds of patterns, you can kind of like play it off to, with each other that maybe have like a certain kind of color that is like a red string that kind of flows from, you know, top to bottom. Uh, but when you start in fashion or with style and you try to explore, I always, uh, you know, recommend to maybe start um, on, with something that you're more comfortable with and then work your way up. So you, it looks great once you get there and it doesn't look, you know, too much because you don't really know what you're doing. So I don't know how many people are style enthusiasts and they want to work their way up into patterns. Um, when I work with my private clients, I make sure that they have their foundation with like one or two patterns done and then go into like mixing all of it together and, and making it look fashion. I love that. So do you have any tips for, for mixing patterns? I think Francie nailed it. It's definitely, I mean, I say have fun with it, play with it. It's testing the waters, take a photo. And this is one of my biggest things. Take a photo of yourself yeah. in it. Put Always. It on. Look in the mirror and then photograph yourself mm -hmm. and then send it to a friend and be like, is this a good look for me? Or send it to your stylist. But it's, it's literally just, it's so fun when people get it right. And it's so high fashion. I, I want to do it more. And I, and I literally give credit to anybody who does it well, but it does take a higher level. As you said, you have to be ready to step out of your comfort zone, ready to be, you know, judged, ready to have criticism. But if you own it, it's bold rocket. Yeah, totally agree. And that's actually a really good idea. Um, it's a really good advice to take I, I tell my clients to make fashion, a fashion album and to start taking those mirror selfies. Sometimes it's like a little bit, you got to get over that like hump of not feeling silly doing it. But once you curate it like 15 to 20 looks and you photograph yourself, you also, what you said earlier about your body proportions, you actually start to notice things that you may have not noticed before, but it is kind of like a routine um kind of a, a flow that once you're in it, once you get in it, you really start like widening your range of, of, of whether it's patterns or colors or cut like different cuts of clothing. Yeah. Um, I love that. Okay. Completely unrelated. So for Franzi, um, like the little black dress, what is today's must have dress? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think really like a floral dress with a slit whether it's like a maxi or a midi or a, a mini dress um not and we're not talking here like tight 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 but just with a little bit of of motion it looks really cute um sometimes as a woman we're maybe a little bit more self-conscious about our legs so yeah try a midi dress that cuts below your knees but have that slit because it does give you that breathability and just makes it look so much more alive. And then with a maxi dress, you obviously have, you know, a lot more coverage, but also with the slit, it just gives it a little bit of like edge, a little bit of that sexiness. And then if you go um, shorter than that, you know, like mid thigh, even that little slit is like still very, it's still tasteful. Yeah, I love that. Shelly, a question for you. Um, what are a few ways that people can use style or that they can um, authentically stand out in a crowd? What are just some like stand out style tips? Tips. I, I mean, I, this is a, this is a tough one. I mean, I feel like it's really, when somebody, when I say someone stands out, I feel they are embodying their entire look. It's an energy, it's an aura. They feel so confident in what they have on that 
I'm attracted to whatever they're doing and it's working. So it's whatever you put on. And obviously back to dressing your body. I feel like the most stylish women know how to dress their body. They know what fabrics to use. They know how to work the proportions and work their best assets. And that when they walk in a room, knowing that they feel that good about themselves, they don't care what anyone else thinks because they love their look and the way they feel. And to me, that's true, like embodiment of their style. And it's how it's the most powerful when they feel that as good as they look, they feel that way about themselves. I feel like. Yeah. I love that. Um, I think feeling good in what you're wearing is a big thing. And, you know, during the pandemic, there was a lot of conversation about, you know, people were wearing sweats all the time and like waist up dressing. So Franzi, what are some ways that people can dress up, but still feel comfortable? Yeah, it was a big, big subject of 2020. And I think, you know, even now moving into the future where we still are going to work from home a lot. Um, a lot of designers um, actually started to make, you know, business appropriate um, pants and tops that uh, maybe have like a different kind of um, material, but they are still very um, versatile. Like they still look very good. They're very sleek. So like a hidden a hidden waistband in the back, you know, definitely gives you a little bit more, you know, comfort. Lululemon does not just make leggings. Like if people yeah. think Lululemon's is leggings, it's actually not true. They have a huge assortment of um, athleisure and lifestyle um, uh, pieces that you can for sure wear to, to, if you go back into the office or wear at home without having to go into the heavy like sweatpant look or into the legging look or anything like that. So, and not just Lululemon, there's definitely other brands that, you know, do the same. And I think that's something um, that's going to make it very helpful to still look well put together, but you also feel, you know, comfortable because once you start wearing the sweatpants, I feel it's kind of a mindset too, right? Sweatpants equal couch. So how much can you get done if you wear, you know, sweatpants or, you know, like the entire day? Exactly. That's well, that that's definitely true. I'm going to track back to some questions that are that are coming up. So Sarah asked, where did I get my top? It's a retrofit. Oh, nice. The crazy thing is, is I was I posted it to Instagram and a stylist was like, is that plus from retrofit? I'm like, this is why I love stylists. You guys just know. I mean, you can tell from like a and I think it was like a selfie. But anyway, I love that. Um, Someone asked, I probably this is for Shelly, um, any advice or brand suggestions for full busted client F cups and above? Yeah, I mean, for sure, my go-to is Le Mystere. You know, their average customer, it's full, it's designed for full fit women. They go up to 44H and they're designed, it's all about fit, support and function. And they have an entire wardrobe in those sizes for yourself and for from sports bras to all all the things so I would say Lemistere um of course there's Chantel it's another great brand I love and but I mean those are the top two and all I wear is Lemistere yeah yeah and what I love about what Shelly has said is that you know like some women feel bad like I think she said that some some clients have cried when you told them their actual bra size because there's this weird stigma about it but I think what Shelly's so good at is having your you know your boobs look pretty no matter what size you are and it's just another weird thing that women have been sold about like what size you should be absolutely yeah okay um any styling tips for petites oh for sure I mean just because you're petite, that doesn't mean, you know, you, you're limited. In fact, I found there's actually a, a huge amount of, of, of women are petite, you know, maybe it's not just your, you know, it's like in, in your physique, you know, maybe you're like a size six petite or a size eight petite. It just means that you're 
shorter than I think it's five five three or so is, is that I think that's where they kind of cut it off and I think the the way it's again actually what Shelly also said it's proportion right I have petite clients and they have some have long legs mm -hmm. so they have a shorter torso mm -hmm. some of my petite clients have a longer torso and a shorter inseam so it's really about figuring out the proportions of the person that's in front of you whether they're petite you know five three or shorter and uh, or if they are five eight uh, so it's really about dialing into the person that's in front of you so if somebody is petite well what you know what are your sizes as much as you can, you know, determine what it is. So do you have a longer inseam? Do you, you know, how's your torso? How's your shoulders in with your hips? Mm -hmm. uh, all of that. And then when you're a petite, then once you have that figured out, you can actually go in and find brands that then have something maybe high-waisted for you or maybe something that cuts at the ankle or a top that's like, three quarter length, length sleeve like if you if you're petite and you want to buy something off the rack just a size zero two four six the arms are arms are going to be long so if you do like three quarter sleeve you probably higher chance that it will fit you but ultimately it is about each person's proportions proportions um kind of unrelated what is the best approach for designers to build relationships with stylists hmm like what so, would be a good way for like and, and this is um this is um um is dola but maybe like if an independent designer would you do you do you like when they dm you or email you or oh i see yeah for fancy. I, yeah, I don't really, yeah. Sally, what do you think? Um, well, I don't have much experience with um, more. I think you probably have more. Yeah. Than so when it comes to that, because sometimes as stylists, we're getting approached and I'm a stylist. I don't do the whole commission thing because I want to be as free in my choosing with for my clients as, as possible. Right. I don't want to be anywhere obligated to buy one brand over the other so but when it comes to like you know celebrity styling or any kind of other you know endorsements for sure I mean Instagram is a great way to reach out um, through agents you know if you if you want to you know um, go that route my agents always forward any kind of you know brand requests to me uh, that's always a good good way to go. It's about finding some sort of entry point. And sometimes you have to do, sometimes I got an email and then I get a direct message and I just notice that this person is really serious about getting recognized with his or her brand. And I do respect that as like an entrepreneur and, you know, it's just, you do have to stay with with that you know use all of the options I love that. um so you guys can keep your questions coming for sure you know for some context franzi does both personal styling um and celebrity styling and shelly is more on the personal styling side with um executive clients and all sorts of amazing amazing clients um this is a question that someone had but how many pair of jeans should you actually own Okay, I'll take this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, less is more. Oh my God, preach. <laughs> less is more. We don't need, I come into closets with 60, 70. It's, no, we only need the obviously on trend and, and, but not even on trend, what works for your body. It doesn't yeah. matter what everybody else is wearing. These need to work for your proportions, work for your body. And if it doesn't, you let it go. It doesn't need to stay in your wardrobe. I would say you need four, uh, a basic light denim, dark denim, and then the silhouettes can be different. So one, one skinny, one straight leg cropped, one bell bottom, one military green. So having a little versatility in a white potentially. So it's more about having variety than having basic denim. And a lot of women tend to buy over buy denim. 
I'm yeah. fine. Too deep in the category. And that's what they kind of just go to because they know it. So it's stepping back and investing in other things rather than you've already got the, you know, you just need a few. And I suggest, I mean, with mine, I'm able to wear them over and over again and they still look new. Less is more when it comes to washing them. So it's buying higher quality, having less items. Yeah. yeah. In terms of, oh. yeah. I, I could not agree more. Sometimes we open closets and we see 30 jeans and we ask the question, so which one fits? And then maybe there's like two. And it's just, it just takes up a lot, a lot of space. This is a question someone asked that I'm curious about. What is your take on the skinny jean being dead? Oh yeah, I've heard this lately. Heard this lately. Yeah. So I was, I was like, oh yeah, we're still doing, that my response is, oh yeah, we're still doing skinny jeans. <laughs> oh, because so, you, you didn't ever do the trend. I, 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 I mean, me personally, and I st definitely still do um, purchase skinny jeans for some of my clients. Um, but uh, I personally stopped purchasing skinny jeans for myself about five years ago. Trendsetter. So I... <laughs> And I, and then, and then recently in the last year, I came up more and some of my clients are like, is are skinny jeans still a thing? And I'm like, well, how do you feel about them? Do you, is this, do you, are you open to maybe, and it's not just women, it's my male clients. Yeah. So my male clients even are asking about non, you know, slim, like more of the straight leg, maybe like a tapered, um, 501s Levi's definitely have like a huge strong comeback mm -hmm. uh, also in men's fashion um, so it's interesting to see that people are looking at other options because of course as Shelly and I know I mean there's so many different cuts of jeans so many and people have limited themselves when skinny jeans came in came as became a trend to only wear skinny jeans that was it right but you like Shelly just mentioned like boot cut cropped ankle you know all the different kinds. cargo like anything I love that we have just a few more minutes and so be sure to answer or ask any questions that you'd like I would love to hear from both of you guys in terms of what kind of transformation you see in your clients from when you meet them to after they've worked with you? Boy, it's huge. Huge it's transformations. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just clothes. It's the whole personality shines. Just like what we talked about earlier. If you're really confident in what you're putting on your body and you understand it, why it looks good on you and you have that knowledge, it's so empowering. So from, from my female clients to my male clients, they're just like, they shine. They're like, this is, I never thought this could, could be possible because clothes before were this overwhelming thing, this mountain. And now they're like on top of it, looking really dapper or very, you know, uniquely to, to themselves. And that's, I think, where most of us stylists style in like what makes you unique what makes you look the best we will help you find that and then we will teach you how to do that over and over again in different varieties in different variations and for you to also be able to do it on your own because you have that knowledge then I love that and Shelly, how about you? Yeah, I mean, very similar to what Francie said. I mean, I, it's such a deep, intense process that my clients have to be ready for when they do commit to it. And when they commit to me, I commit to them in a very yeah. deep way. This is not just shopping. Mm -mm. This is a process that literally is unlocking what the moment I walk in their closet, it's unlocking what's been holding them back from feeling good, from understanding their worth to all of those things. And I help them uncover that. I'm a mirror and they get to see me shining, me wearing what I feel good in. And I help them do that. And they literally feel 
like a completely different person mm-hmm. after working with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's that powerful. So it's true. Yeah. It, you know, there's a little bit of a stigma on fashion being vain and I cannot disagree more. It is not something that's vain at all. Just because you want to look good and express that, it's actually it takes quite a bit of courage to do that, you know, and to like, just like Shelly said, to be ready for that journey, for that adventure to self-discovery and then wearing the clothes that really are best for you. I mean, it's, it's, it's an incredible journey, but the person does need to be ready for it. And it's not, it's anything but vain. It's very profound, actually. I love it. This is one of the things that I love about Glam Hive is that as a stylist community, you know, for all of you stylists out there, it's really a place where we have this conversation a lot. And I think it's, you know, it's mostly women. There's some, there, we have our few guys that are part of it, but the work that you do is so important. And, you know, for a lot of stylists, you work in isolation and you have your one-on-one interactions with your clients. But I think Glam Hive as a community is very supportive of um, just how much you benefit regular people in their everyday life to become the best version of themselves, yeah. which is something that we all believe in so much. So for all of you stylists out there, if you go to Glam Hive, we'd love to have you be part of it. Um, you can definitely email me at Stephanie at Glam Hive. Um, Franzi and Shelly, tell us your Instagram handles. So mine is styled by Franzi. And then I also have for my private clients, for my private consulting, it's Stator Style, which is my last name and style. Yeah, Stator Style. And Shelly? I'm at Shelly Carlson. Shelly Carlson. Because I know there was someone in just went to Chicago. So Sheba, she just moved to Chicago. So maybe reach out to Shelly and that yeah. would be awesome. These panels go by so fast. I can't even believe it. But like, bam, it's it's done. Thank you so much, everyone, for being part of the day. And Shelly and Franzi, just sharing your expertise and being so beautiful and shiny yourselves. Thank you. It's always nice to just speak with you guys. Yes, it's so good to see you. Okay, you guys have a good day. Okay, bye. Bye.